back there in the foyer, and here's the recipe if somebody wants to, one of these, they can help themselves. We, okay, we, uh, Sonny has in the back some kumquats and lemons. Are these perhaps a, the fruit of your labors? Are they from your particular garden or, yes. Okay, so they're, they are homegrown. Not only, do, all right, so Rick has uh, a sample to demonstrate there. I take those to be kumquats. They don't appear to be lemons. I am not uh, up on my fruits, I, I confess. But not only did he bring the fruits, he brought a recipe for how to use them. There are several copies here, several copies. So you have no excuse not to enjoy the fruits with which we've been blessed. Thank you, Sonny. Appreciate that. Are there other items of good news today? Good news. Yes, Emily. Excellent. <laughs> Emily reports that the uh, gym's most recent CAT scan, PET scan, showed no cancer, which is the second scan in a row, right, which has been quite amazing to the doctors, and we are glad for that. And uh, it is good to be amazed. Uh, on, on a, certainly on occasion. Thank you for that good news. Are there other items? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. He said it. If you did, if there's not enough kumquats there, come out to his property and uh, get them off the tree. I don't know if you, do you need them to check in with you before they just drive up and, and go get them? No, uh, Gene, Gene says it's okay just to drive up there and get them. Oh, that's, you can't beat that. Sonny said he'd be glad to help you. So you have no excuse to eat healthy. That's wonderful. Um, Okay, uh, we do have some birthdays to consider. Uh, I am apprised that Brother Ed had a birthday on the 27th. Is that right, sir? 27th of December. And that you turned 87. <laughs> you didn't know that. That's what I'm told. So uh, we will... Consider that as good news, and are there other birthdays? Well, then let, oh, yeah, Roger. Tuesday, Roger will be 56. Only 21 more years to go, I mean 31, before you too can be 87. <laughs> George just had a comment that... Uh, Okay, good. <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. So uh, I think that's, are there any others? Any others? Let us sing happy, oh, yes. Dorothy. Thank you, Dorothy. And of course, uh, many will uh, praise the Lord for the jacket you're wearing. Uh, as it is uh, uh, well, well received uh, here today. Let's sing happy birthday to Ed and Roger. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Awesome. Uh, and before I forget, 
Uh, Hannah, any good news for us today? Good news at all? Like Christmas? Did you get any, uh, did you get a present? Yeah, a good one? Okay, good. That's, that's awesome. Glad to hear it. Uh, let's see. We do have some announcements that are uh, kind of out of the ordinary, so I want to make sure we catch them. In the what's coming up section of your bulletin, the inner fold of your bulletin, uh, what's coming up, item two, Wednesday, January 2nd. Uh, and it ties in with item number one as well. Uh, there's going to be a change in our prayer service practice or schedule. And instead of the first Sunday morning of each month, instead of that, we will uh, have prayer service in the month of January on Wednesday morning, the 10th of January. Wednesday morning, the 10th of January, 10.30 a.m. Uh, the intent is to increase participation and to uh, accommodate as many as possible. Uh, obviously, we will have activities next Sunday morning. Uh, they will be uh, Sunday school, though, not a prayer meeting on the first Sunday of the month. So Wednesday, January 10th, 10.30 a.m., here, of course, uh, prayer, prayer service. Uh, Wayne said we're going to try that uh, and see how that's received. Uh, also, in the special announcements part of your bulletin, just below the what's coming up, we have listed a priesthood meeting. That's going to be Sunday, January 14th. It'll be at 2 o'clock here, so a meeting for all priesthood, whether of Melchizedek or Aaronic orders. All right. Are there those we need to consider for the prayer list today? Or updates to who is already there? I don't see any. Uh, um, Ashley, how long are you with us? Till Wednesday. You're going back Wednesday. Dad taxi service. Uh, Dad Uber is taking you there. Mom Uber. Okay. Well. Ah. Dad Uber's going west. Mom Uber heads east. Fair enough. Uh, oh, we do have, meant to put this in our good, good news part, we do have a gift that's been given to us by one of our scout leaders, right? right. That helps with the, uh, with the Cub Scouts. Right. And she just wanted to give this to our congregation. It is a plate that has been decorated and, uh, ha oh, it's interesting. It's a glass plate that where the underside is, has the uh, pattern. It uh, contains the Scout Oath and the Scout Law, which are indeed uh, things to, uh, to uh, confess and to take hold of even if you're not a scout. And uh, we also have uh, a peace sign here. I, I presume that uh, our scouts helped uh, prepare this. She's the uh, Bear Den leader. She's the Bear Den leader. And uh, so I appreciate the joy that is inherent in the presentation here as well, the creativity. Uh, I'm going to place this in the pastor's study and uh, would hope that uh, you may get a chance to look at it at some point. Thank you very much to our uh, troop that we sponsor. It's a very nice gesture. Please uh, convey our thanks and appreciation. Let us continue with our worship. Don't forget the kumquat recipes.
Good morning. Happy New Year to you. And that I was wondering how many people I wouldn't see until next year. And that uh, that is uh, happy to see each of you here this morning. Uh, I was watching a little bit of the weather report this morning, and it uh, focused uh, minus 54 wind chill in where I used to live as a five-year-old, and that was up in North Dakota. And I'll be honest with you, I'd much rather have the plus 54 that we had earlier in the morning, and that I know the weather's changing. I couldn't help but think about this year of 2017, of all the worships that I shared with you, the activities and getting together, and uh, it brought a smile to my face, and it, and it brought joy to my heart. And so I'm thankful that we're sharing this morning, this last worship together, and it is my prayer that God will bless each of us for the coming year, 2018. From Moroni, the seventh chapter. Behold, I say to you that you shall have hope through this atonement of Christ and the power of his resurrection to be raised to life eternal. And this because of your faith in him according to his promise. Wherefore, if a man have faith, he must have hope. For without faith, there cannot be any hope. Join with me. God, God 
where your spirit leads today. Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. Let us pray. As we prepare to enter in a new year, we give thanks for the many blessings you have bestowed on us this year. May we walk gently into the new year as we follow your mission of peace. May we speak only after we have listened well, remembering that our words carry power. We pray for peace for every creature and plant, every person and habitat. We pray for peace across our world during these difficult times and for all those who are seeking to bring peace and justice to every corner of the earth. May the grace and peace of Christ bless us now and in the days ahead. Amen. Good morning. Uh, today, the last Sunday of the year, uh, the last day of the year, uh, your last chance to contribute in 2017. So I really felt obliged to uh, bring some numbers. I, I, I usually, when I do this, I try to hold it to three numbers. And usually I try for it not to be the same three numbers. But there is one number that stays constant, and that is 60,000. And that is the number that we agreed in January of 2017 that we would contribute as part of our Sunday offertory uh, toward expenses for local operations. Not World Church, not Bluff Springs, not Mission Center. This was the amount that we said we would offer as part of our Sunday morning contributions. So I know you are probably waiting with bated breath to say, how close do we come to that number? And I do have that number. Can y'all read this? 57,300. Pretty close, isn't it? Pretty close. But that doesn't mean we can't meet it, right? We still have today, right? So this is what? This is all we need today. So uh, if anybody, um, you know, if you haven't written your check yet, uh, this is the amount that we need. So uh, help carry us over the finish line. Get us over that uh, to that $60,000. So with that in mind and with, uh, in that vein, uh, let us think then about what we can contribute. And this is what I would like to read. May we spend ourselves and our substance in striving for Christ's goals. May we hunger and thirst after righteousness. May we be merciful and the peacemakers in the midst of injustice and strife. May we give of our time, our talent, our treasure, and our toil in the name of Jesus. With us, just come forward. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we do come to the end of this year thankful for the many things that we've enjoyed, the blessings we've enjoyed both material and spiritual. And we know that all those things that we have and all those things that we enjoy, we are but stewards over. 
that they all from you, come from you and they are all part of your blessings to us. May we this morning be even more aware that there are those who probably are in less, uh, more need than we are. We know that there are many less fortunate, that there is suffering and that there is poverty all around the world, and that we are blessed and enjoy a lifestyle that's not known by many. So this morning as we come before thee, giving thee thanks for those things which thou hast bestowed upon us, may we also be able to be generous with that which thou hast given to us, that we might be able to share, and that we might be able to share wisely with those who are less fortunate. For these things we do pray in Christ's most holy name. Amen. A day of expectations, isn't it? We have many expectations. Uh, this has been a month of expectations. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things I think that uh, keeps us engaged with what's going on around us because we, we live on expectations. We look forward to things that are on the horizon. Some of those things we imagine, some we know they are coming, but we do live in a time in our own lives of expectations. One of the expectations that we've recently gone through, of course, is the expectations that come with Christmas. And uh, I had, uh, we had this routine uh, at our house my uh, our kids from Ohio wasn't able to come this Christmas, but of course, Shannon and Joseph and their two boys show up to get their loot um, on Christmas morning. And we have a we have a routine. Uh, they get there about lunchtime, and uh, no presents are opened until after we take a meal. So everybody's anxious to eat. Um, one of the few times that they're all anxious to eat, particularly the youngest one. Uh, but we were sitting in, the, in my recliner, me and Charlie, waiting for the food to be placed on the table Christmas morning or Christmas about noontime. And uh, he came up with this, uh, he, he continues to keep me uh, wondering what's going to happen next. And he said, you know something, Grandpa? I said, what? He said, you know, he's nine now, by the way. The older you get, the fewer presents you have under the tree. <laughs> now, there's a lot of wisdom and observation, wise observation in that, isn't there? Because we get to a point in our lives where the things that are of temporal nature 
uh, we most of all most of us who are fortunate uh, have already achieved we already have those things or have had those things and we're not we're not looking for more uh, temporal expectations we become more concerned about the things that really matter to us as we are uh, a little bit older. And that is we want to have uh, good friends, healthy families, uh, things that interest us, a way to contribute to our society. We want to feel as if we're needed by others. And we want to have these relationships that make us who we are. And I can probably say that virtually everybody in this room is blessed in all those ways. We are truly, truly blessed as a people in this place. We don't really want for anything. I want you to think about that because we're, we're at that point, as has been mentioned several times, when we're at another milestone in our lives. This is the last day of 2017. And as I told somebody one time, it seems as if uh, I'm in a videotape that's been on fast forward for the last several years and doesn't seem to be slowing down. Because time goes by quickly, and tomorrow will be 2018. Now, our scripture text this morning is about expectations. Luke, which is considered by the scholars as the oldest book in the New Testament, and it gives the better Christmas account, as far as I'm concerned, than the other Christmas accounts in the Bible. And it's because, primarily because of one thing that, that happens in this account, and that's when Jesus is taken to the temple. Now just prior to that, that on the eighth day, in, Jewish, in the Jewish law and tradition, on the eighth day, the male child is circumcised, and this has occurred. It's accounted for in the second chapter of Luke. And then on the 40th day, when Mary has achieved her purification, her time when the issues from her body after birth, she's been healed, she's overcome to a certain extent, uh, and they go to the temple for the final purification uh, rights and the blessing of the child. And in that account, the reason I like that account is because in Matthew you see there is none of this because immediately the, the family leaves out of fear, apparently, of Herod and migrates to Egypt for some period of time. In the Luke account, it seems more reasonable that they would hang around and fulfill all the law and then go back home. They'd go back to Nazareth. And that's exactly what is accounted for in the, in the book of Luke. And I like that. It makes sense to me. And so in this account, if you remember the scripture, Jesus is named, first of all, at the, his circumcision. Now, what was he named? Was he named Jesus? Is Jesus a, a, a name in Judaism? No, Jesus is Hispanic. Let me tell you what Jesus was named. Yehoshua ben Yosef. Joshua, son of Joseph. He was named at his circumcision. And then after Mary's purification... On the 40th day, they went to the temple. By the way, Bethlehem, I checked the map, Bethlehem is about six miles from old Jerusalem. So they didn't have far to travel if they remained in Bethlehem after Jesus was born. And so they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. 
And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation or the comfort, if you will, of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people, Israel. And the child's mother and father were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. And then Simon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too or as well. And then in the last verse that I'll read, the return to Nazareth. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon them. And so their goal was to do everything that they were supposed to have done when a child is born, and they fulfill the law by these acts and by following through on the things that was written and, and if you want to find out what the law says, you can look in the 12th chapter of Leviticus. And it outlines what transpires when a child is born, particularly a male child. And so here in, this, in these uh, readings, we have the identification of Jesus. He is identified as to who he's going to be through the blessing given by Simeon, uh, his calling and the recognition of Jesus by those in that time and in that place, and ultimately they saw Jesus. And so Jesus was born into a family where the tradition of law was important. And it makes us wonder what kind of laws we have in our own tradition. I was thinking this morning, this, these rituals that uh, were practiced by the Jews and still are to some extent, depending on the, whether they're reformed or, or uh, uh, conservative or whatever their denomination requires them to be, uh, whether they still follow these same laws. But we have our own traditions, don't we? We just talked about Christmas. You all have your own Christmas traditions. And I would suspect that for all of us, in some sense at least, even on Christmas morning, those traditions involve a sense of worship for the blessings that we have received. And so it all relates to our traditions, our heritage, uh, where we came from, how we were raised. These are all very important concepts when, it, when we start talking about um, our traditions, and ultimately our expectations. And so the Spirit guided Simeon. Does the Spirit guide our traditions? Well, I would say that for the most part, I would say that they do, that the Spirit does uh, guide our traditions. I think most especially, if we want to talk about traditions and rituals and the law and all those kinds of things, all we have to do is think about the eight ordinances of the church, and what are they? Remember what the eight ordinances are of the church? What's the first one you think of? Baptism. Okay, what's next? Huh? No, that's not an ordinance. These are things that we do 
to celebrate. Repentance is a personal thing. These are things that we do to celebrate what God has commanded. So we got baptism. Rep huh? Huh? Blessing of little children. We just talked about that. What else? Marriage is an ordinance. Ma'am? Confirmation. Ordination. Administration to the sick. Evangelist blessing. Me. The Lord's Supper. I think that's all of them. So those are, those are rituals. Those are commandments. That's what an ordinance means. It's a commandment that we practice these things. And in addition to that, they have become traditions. So first of all, they were commandments, and now they've become traditions. The one that we practice probably more often than the rest is a corporate one, which is the, the communion, the, the celebration of the Lord's Supper, at least once a month, and sometimes on special occasions, we will do it as well. So these are very important, because, and what is the reason for them? Is it because we're just being obedient? to follow the ordinances that have been established for us, or is there more to it than that? If we're just obedient, we fulfill the law, haven't we? If we're just obedient. But isn't there more to it than that? What's the outcome? Well, I'll tell you this. If we follow the ordinances with sincere hearts, led by the Spirit into those ordinances, we will be blessed beyond measure. And it continues to help us to grow in the Spirit as we practice these ordinances. You know, there's only one of those ordinances that not everybody can partake of. The rest of them, we're all invited to partake of those ordinances, including the community at large. How many of you have married non-members? Performed wedding ceremonies for non-members? How many of you have, uh, have uh, performed an administration for someone who is not a member? Yeah. So they're open. The only one that's not open to non-members is ordination. You have to be a member to be ordained. And there are accounts in the history of the church where people have been baptized and confirmed and ordained the same day. So it's not unheard of that someone would be involved in three separate ordinances in one day. And so these are things that we can look forward to. Now, the second part of that, what, what is really important about it, these ordinances? Think about it. What does it do for you? Well, I'll tell you what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to bring you in contact with your Heavenly Father. Worship does that, certainly. Good worship allows that to occur if we are ready and, expect, and expecting it to happen. But the ordinances are specifically set aside and set apart for us to become closer to our Heavenly Father. You see, we call it an ordinance... And what makes it sacred is when the person comes in contact with God. And then they become sacraments. And so they're ordinances and we move to the sacramental side of the coin. And then the ordinance is fulfilled. Now, we've read, as we have done on several Sundays recently, we've read the... Uh, the mission prayer. Look at it again. Let's read it again. God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and, becoming, and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. This prayer is asking the Spirit to come into our lives and open our eyes to those situations where the Lord has called us to represent Him. That's what that prayer is all about. 
How many of you pray that prayer every day? How many of you are familiar with that prayer and you put it in a place where you can see it and look at it? I've got it on my, I've got it on my computer. When I sit down at my computer, that's the first thing I see. So it is important that we not only understand and pray the prayer, but that we respond to it. Several years ago, uh, Grace and I were in the place that we spend more time than any other place in Walmart. <laughs> Which reminds me, uh, when, when Mitchell was little, he was a, three years old or something like that, somebody was talking to him here at church, I think, and they were asking him, well, where do you live, Mitchell? Where do you live? He said, Walmart. <laughs> One time, Grace and I were in Walmart several years ago, and, and I got separated from Grace. She was, she was more intentional in terms of what she was there for than I was. Uh, I was more like the chauffeur and the, the box carrier and the reacher of things on high shelves. And so she was, uh, she was intentional about her shopping, and I got separated and I, I was leaning up against the frozen food case out in that center aisle where the meat and all that stuff is. And I saw this gentleman. He was uh, maybe a little bit older than I was and uh, he was wandering down this aisle and looking at things and he would stop and come back and he would just look and look and look. And I thought he was looking for something specific. And so finally, after I'd seen this for a while, I thought, well, maybe I can help him find what he's looking for. So I went over and I said to him, I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I see you, you look like you're a little lost here looking for something. Can you tell me what you're looking for? And maybe I can help you find it. He said, he turned and he looked at me and he, he obviously had to think whether he wanted to even speak to me or not. But he finally said, he said, um, I'm not sure what I'm looking for. He said, my wife passed away last week. And he said, during her illness, uh, things were used up in the house and I'm, I'm trying to buy groceries and I'm not sure where to start. So it wasn't so much the groceries that he needed as somebody, I sensed at least, somebody to listen to him. And so we stood there and talked for a while and he said, I'm sure I'll be able to find what I want. And I said, well, if I can help you, I said, all the if I was a bachelor or living alone, I would start over here in the frozen food section. I'd buy meals and things like that and, you know, take them home and you can cook them in your microwave or your oven and all that. And so we talked for a while and he said, well, I really appreciate it. And he said, I thank you for stopping. And I said, let me ask you a question. I said, would you like to have prayer? And he said, yes. And I said, let me tell you something. We practice an ordinance in our church where we anoint the person who needs prayer with, with oil that has been consecrated for healing purposes. And I said, if you'd like to do that, we'll, we'll do that. I've got my oil with me. And he said, yes, I'd like to do that. And so I anointed that man by the frozen food section with people passing by and looking on and then I prayed for him, holding my hands on his head. And I trust that he was blessed because I was. There was a, there was a presence in that place of confusion and people looking for things that they needed that uh, could not have happened in any other way. And so, my prayer for you today is that your expectations will follow along the lines of the mission prayer. 
that you will get up each morning and ask what the Lord wants you to do because, believe me, you and I have been blessed beyond measure and for us to withhold that blessing that's supposed to be shared from anybody else that we run across in the day is a sin, pure and simple. When we fail to respond to the leadings of the Spirit that comes often in our lives to reach out to someone around us and bring them the, a share of the blessing that we have in our own lives, we have not lived up to the calling that we all have. My prayer is with you that you will be strong, that you will take risks, that you will respond to the needs of those around you as, the, as you see them around you every day. Amen.
Please take out the insert. Take a few minutes to quiet yourself. Watching your breath helps to calm and center our natural restlessness. When you feel a sense of calm, begin by repeating the following blessing, giving the words time to resonate in your heart and mind. When your heart feels full of loving compassion, move from yourself to someone who is beloved to you. This could be a life partner, a family member, a companion. Visualize the person as you pray this blessing and insert their name into the prayer. Again, when your heart is full of loving compassion, move from this person to close or dear friend. Visualize the person as you pray this blessing. When you feel full with loving compassion, move to an acquaintance from whom you have neither positive or negative feelings. Visualize that person as you pray this blessing. As you feel your heart again, filled with loving compassion, think of someone who has harmed you or with whom you are in conflict. Visualize this person. Take a moment, breathe deeply, and looking the person in the eye or visualizing the person Lovingly pray the following blessing. Amen.
Heavenly Father, I come to you at this time to thank you once and again for the blessings that we have received as a congregation and as individuals during this service and throughout the year. God, I pray this benediction not only on the service, but on the year that is almost ended. Bless us, God, with your Holy Spirit. May it guide us in the new year. May we reach out to those who need us without holding back. May we love the ones in our family and in our friends, and most importantly, God, the ones that are hard for us to love. Thank you for your love, your guidance, your forgiveness. And most importantly, God, we thank you for your son, whose birthday we just recently celebrated and whose life showed us a life that will not only be good for us, but will enable us, God, to spend eternity with you and our loved ones. Once again, God, thank you so much for your love that has been shown in this service through our speaker and all the others that participated. And God, once again, be with us as we close out this year and let the new year be a challenge to us, a reward to us, and a blessing to those around us. This I pray in your son's name, Jesus the Christ, and God, we give you the thanks. Amen.